Hi, I'm Mike. And today we take a look at hay yields from our very first hay field of this year's haying season. We're gonna talk about how much we actually got and we're gonna be taking a look at some new hay moving equipment from Hustler Equipment. It's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. J Ranch and Jeff here to help us out today. And this is kind of a mixture between um, hay yield video, but we're also kind of doing a hustler showdown here. Um, as we're gonna, Jeff is actually, I'm gonna say we, but I mean you. Uh, Jeff is actually gonna go pick up bales and stack them up. Why do we do that? To let them cure. Yeah, let them and, dry out a little bit. And to have them in one place when we go to haul them. Yeah, that makes a big difference big where you're difference. not driving around the field picking up one bale here, one bale there. Yeah. Uh, that can get really old really quick. So we have multiple ways to pick up bales. And the way that we've done it for years is just a single spear that looks just like this one that we have on the tractor now. But we have multiple choices this year thanks to Hustler Equipment. And uh, we're going to take a look at them. We're going to go one by one through them and take a look and see what the differences are and talk a little bit about uh, why we may want this certain piece of equipment to move around bales. First, we're going to look at is the Lift Max. This is LM160. Uh, this one is a little different, Jeff, just because it has four spears and it doesn't have that center spear like our other one. Right. I think this one is probably built more for square bales. That's what I was thinking. But I'm wondering if we can utilize it to pick up more than one bale. Put one bale on each set of spears. So you put one bale there, one bale there. That's maybe, what I'm hoping. Maybe we can pick up two at a time. That'll make things go a little faster, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, thoughts? I think this is adjustable. Okay. It is adjustable. Yeah, probably. So for stacking for oh. square bales, you can get a taller stack if you have it low, I think. It's, no, it's, that makes sense. So if you had two square bales stacked on top of each other, you could grab the bottom one, and the top one would just kind of rest against right. these, and you'd be able to stack, Right. you know, as many as your tractor could lift, or well, as high as these can go. So probably two. Yeah. <laughs> the other one we have is the LiftMax LE110. Now this is a little bit smaller version. Jeff, uh, we were talking about how it's probably made for a more compact tractor, yeah. uh, probably even more compact than what we have. But this one has the two spears as well. You could probably go with three, because there's another hole there. Yeah. And it does have a hole for an upper spear there, uh, which we're not utilizing. We're just gonna try it with these two and see how well that works, yeah. okay. And then uh, besides the, our original one that we're using already, we have this one. This is the Hustler LX200 Soft Hands. Now, normally you would see this used for those marshmallow bales, right? Silage bales. Um, you don't want to poke holes in them, obviously, because that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but these I'm kind of excited to see because these are actually hydraulic and they close up and grab the bale in a nice and gentle way and slowly rock it to sleep as you <laughs> put it wherever it needs to go. So those are our four choices for today. Jeff is gonna be testing each one and what we're gonna do here and how we're gonna do this is, Jeff, I'm gonna have you go out and grab one bale with each implement. Okay. So make sure you're thinking because at the end of that, using all four of them, we're gonna have you pick your favorite. Then you're gonna go to town. You're gonna start picking up bales. We'll come back out in a little while uh, once you got a few stacks going and we'll talk about if it's still your favorite okay. or if you actually got annoyed enough to go and switch. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then obviously uh, we'll see how things are going. And we're gonna talk about hay yields as well. That's the other thing we're gonna yeah. talk about. We're gonna talk about um, how much of a difference the clover made in this single field. Now I can tell you last year, this field we got 20 bales off of. So the entire, the, well, the area the that we 80, did. So we cut 80, 80 acres of this so far. Um, we ran into some stormy weather. That's true. So we put down 80 acres. We went to beat heck to get it, to get it up and bailed, which we barely managed to do. We were about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, uh, a little bit of buffer zone there, but we did get it done. And then, uh, but having this done makes a huge difference, uh, even in, in the yield, like we're talking about. So we're going to talk about that coming up at the end of the video. But the beginning here is, uh, of course, brought to you by Hustler and, and this equipment here that they've let us try out and use and hopefully not break. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees. No guarantees. All right. So, Jeff, we're going to start out with this bad boy. This is our single spear. It actually has two stabilizing spears on it. There's a dog over here. Hey, kiddo. That's our neighbor's dog, by the way, as he's sneaking around there. Um, so it's got the two stabilizing spears, and Jeff is going to go out and you. This one you've got, you know, you've got this one down. You've used yeah, this one use it all a lot. Um, is there something you don't like about this kind of spear? Yeah, visibility. Visibility. You, you can't see it. Can't see 
all the way out here to see if it's level. So, you know, sometimes you get into a bale this way, sometimes you get into it this way. So until you, until you figure out what level is, yeah, it's kind of typical. Okay, so maybe one of these other uh, bale handling attachments will actually make a difference. Well, I'm, I'm liking the frames, because you can see the frames, you don't have to see the spears. Uh, so you can tell which way is up. Cool, all That's right. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm glad you're thinking. I'm no expert, though. Uh, I don't know if anybody really is. Hustler is. They probably <laughs> know way more about this stuff than we do. All right, let's uh, jump in and pick okay. us up a bale and start your stacking. All righty. So as Jeff goes to grab this first bale, luckily we do have a lot of bales here pretty close by. In fact, it's going to take us more time probably to change out the different implements uh, or the different loader attachments than actually to practice using them. So here we go. Ah, uh, Jeff's an old pro with that one. Look at him go. Where do you want to leave the uh, implements? You want to put them over there by the fence? The implement? The implements. I got a thumbs up. I think that means yes. Okay. Jeff's going to swing over here. We're going to help him drop off these implements and grab a new one. I think next we'll have him grab the big guy here, or is he going to go after the little one? This one? This is the Hustler LiftMax LM160. That's gonna be our next choice. Have him try this one out. All right, we're hooked up. Definitely a different looking setup, but uh, we'll see how well Jeff likes this one. He's looking for a bail, looking for a victim. So you got a lot more hanging out underneath the uh, loader there, as you can see. So that's something you kind of got to be conscious of. You don't want to accidentally run your loader or those spears into the ground. All right, Jeff's going to try to pick this one up, set it next to another one. He's going to try to get two. Try again. It's gonna go a little higher this time. And look at that. Got two bales up in the air and ready to go. That's the LiftMax LM160. Next up, we have the LiftMax LE, I remember, I can't remember all these numbers, LE110, LiftMax LE110. So we're gonna try to grab this one next. So 
this one, basically the same thing as the other one, but like, like we said earlier, I think it's made for a more compact tractor. Uh, probably one much less as big or even smaller, depending on how you want to word it, uh, than ours. But you can only grab one bale with this one, but we'll see how Jeff likes it. And remember, at the end of testing each one of these, uh, these loader attachments, Jeff is going to pick his favorite to go out and work with. And we're off to drop this one off. And now for our last one, which I'm kind of excited about. The Soft Hands, the LX200 from Hustler Equipment. This is the only hydraulic um, <laughs> bale handler that we're testing today. So if it works, great. It may not be what we need for our operation, but it's definitely working for a lot of people across the U.S. who are dealing with silage and those marshmallow bales that you see out there uh, on the countryside. Over. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Okay. I was more afraid of pinching it oh. if it was underneath, right? And hooking up. No, I think that'll work just fine. Go ahead and test it out and see if they open and close. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know what you think, Jeff, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm liking it so far. <laughs> All right, pick a victim and let's go do it. So you'll ask why we don't just come out here with grapples and grab two bales with our giant grapples that we have on the tractor bucket normally. And that's because we don't really want to pop holes in the net wrap. Anywhere there's a hole in that net wrap then allows moisture to get in, which can cause all, problem, all kinds of problems over the winter. And that's the basic premise behind the soft hands as well, is that there's really no damage going to take place to the bale, whether it's wrapped in net wrap or you've got those marshmallow bales that uh, we showed you earlier. So we will see how this works. I think uh, there's a couple different options here on how we're going to do this. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, hey, Jeff, as I see it, I mean, you've got a bunch of different options on how to grab this bale. You can grab it from the end. I think you can come up over the top and grab it. Um, maybe you could even span the whole width of the bale. We could try grabbing it different ways and see what works the best. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I'm thinking if we had, if we stacked like some people do on end and then sideways on top of that, this would do it. Yeah, that's called uh, toadstool stacking, and it's really useful for keeping deer out of your hay. Yeah, this would be the tool for that, I think, if it tilts all the way flat. Well, let's, uh, let's try it out. All right, so Jeff's going for the grab from the front to start with, or from the end. He's going to pinch it in. Can you pick it up? Oh, not quite. Doesn't quite have the holding power. Looks like Jeff's going to try it again from the end. Doesn't quite want to stay. Jeff's got one more way to try to grab this bale, and that's directly from the side. These are five foot bales, five foot tall, five foot wide, so hopefully this will work. Now 
Now that's pretty nice. I think that might be the way to do it. It looks like the design is either from the end or from the top. Yeah, that makes total sense. Well, go stack this one and we'll, uh, we'll discuss. So again, with the soft hands, no damage to the bale taking place, no holes, um, no, you know, even when you're using a spear, you're putting a hole in the end of the bale. You know, something could squirrel its way in there, a squirrel, perhaps, or uh, a mouse or uh, a cat or anything could uh, kind of use that to start making a, a little nest inside your bale also. Not that they probably couldn't get in if they really wanted to, but when you're putting a hole in each one with the spear, that might just be a an invitation for badness to happen to your bale. Okay. All right, Jeff. Uh, the moment of truth, you, you've stacked four bales, which is more than enough, you know, testing time. Oh, yeah. Um, if, if you were going to pick one of these to run with and, and start gathering bales out of this field, which one would you want on the front of your tractor? Soft hands. You like this, huh? I do. Is there, uh, we were talking a little bit about, you know, you're not putting a hole in the bale with the spear. Right. And I never really thought about it before. When you put a hole in the bale, you are, in, you know, making it pretty easy for like a mouse to get in there or a cat or a groundhog or whatever else we Anything got out here to start yeah if you get a starter hole somebody's going to go in yeah exactly so this thing is not damaging the bale at all mm -hmm. i guess one of the other big things too and i didn't think about this was the ride in the tractor i mean you've noticed when you've got two bales or you've got something bigger farther out in front of you on the tractor you can get kind of a little bit of a, a porpoising action going on <laughs> yeah um did this seal this this seem any different no stability no. wise i didn't feel any difference between all four of them no okay but I have some thoughts on those, so yeah. <laughs> we can wait till later, but right off the top, two on the... Well, let's go look. Okay, so now we're over here at the equipment. This is the LM160. Um, this one I noticed when you were running with it, it hung way below um, the where like this one would sit. Yeah. This one sits pretty even with the bottom of your lower arms. This one, this one's way down. Yeah. Well, um, so that's something you have to keep track of because it'd be pretty easy to just run it into the ground. Yeah. And the with two bales, they roll. If you notice, they, right? They roll. If there was, if it was a five tine, it would work. Right. Or if you had a tine up high, like here. Yeah. Then it would stabilize those bales too. Either, yeah, five or six times you could do it. And, but I think we're right. Like I think it's made for square bales. It sure looks like it. Yeah. Because a big square bale will fit right on that. Mm -hmm. You could get two little, you know, sixty pounders, a whole stack of sixty pounders. Yeah, no but doubt. For for big round bales, one at a time, yeah, it'd work great. Yeah. But that's an awful lot for one bale. And what about the LE one ten? Without the third tine spear, that's what they're called, spears. Without the third, the top spear, they're, it's hanging out it's there, hanging ready out there. to fall off, and you run over it. It's, right, and these are pretty short spears on the bottom, so they're yeah. not really holding it up the way you would expect it to. Yeah. Okay. So for a smaller, uh, small bales, like I think your neighbor has a small baler, a smaller round baler. Mm -hmm. Probably, like four foot bales would probably work great. Probably perfect. Yeah. And then when you compare the soft hands to just our original one, um, obviously, I think we talked about it earlier, but you can see what you're doing with the soft hands yeah. too. Yeah. You and can see the whole bar across, the sides, everything. So you're not running into the bale and tearing it up. And Versatility is soft hands. You can go from side, I could come from the top, turn it and stack it, and you know, stack it up tall, right? Which we don't, because well, we it could. just gathers water. And, True, but, but I'm liking it <laughs> a lot, and I'm thinking I don't have to line up a spear with the center of a bale. I can run up here, grab it, turn, drop it. 
I think it's going to be a lot more faster and more convenient. Very cool. Very cool. All righty, Jeff, uh, I'll let you get to it. I guess we don't have to switch this thing off. I thought we were going to have to switch around one more time, but we don't. Um, Jeff is going to head out. He's going to start gathering bales. Now, I said we had 20 bales off of this 80 acres, uh, which goes just up to the top of that hill. Uh, we had 20 bales last year. This year, we harvest 70 bales off of this very same field. We're going to talk a little bit coming up about what that means uh, for the cows, uh, for their winter nutrition, and uh, the next step after Jeff gets them all gathered up. So, Jeff, have fun. You bet. And uh, listen to some music on the way. It's my thinking time. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you have that much time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back in just a minute, and we'll check it out. Alrighty guys, it's been a few hours. Jeff has pretty much got this field completely cleaned up. You can see all these bales that he's got lined up here and he's got a couple stacks just like this. Now last year we got 20 bales off of this 80 acres and that 20 bales was about 28,000 pounds of feed or enough to feed the cows for 18 days or so. This year, with the inclusion of our clover, which we made sure was dead dry by the time that we baled it, we actually got 70 bales, and those 70 bales, 98,000 pounds. That's enough to feed our cows for 60 whole days of winter. And that's the difference that one year can make a little bit of rain and some clover can make to our crops. So we're out here just kind of taking a look around, and Jeff's pretty much got it completely cleaned up. All the bales are put away except for back in this corner. Looks like he's working up in here. And again, he's putting them in piles or groups so that it makes it a whole lot easier to uh, to come up here with a trailer, pick them up and get them down to our hay storage yard. Uh, we're gonna catch up with Jeff here in just a second and see what he thinks of the soft hands after using it for, well, three or four hours. By the way, switched hats, uh, mostly because I was working on a tractor and I didn't feel like getting my cowboy hat all, all greasy. So always nice to have a couple different hats floating around. Um, and then I forgot to put it back on. So that's the, uh, the secret of what happened to my hat. So I'm sure somebody's gonna comment about it. Let's see if we can uh, catch up with Jeff when he drops this bale off here. Well, Jeff, you've been out here for three or four hours, maybe. Yeah. Uh, are the soft hands still your favoriteest thing in the whole world? I do like them a lot. Yeah? A lot. Is there anything that you've learned while you're using them that uh, has changed since yep. the early, early, earlier in the day? <laughs> yep. Uh, there is a sweet spot as far as level and height. Gotcha. Where it'll hold on. And then there's the not so sweet spot where it'll start rolling out and if you're facing downhill you got to chase it so oh gosh i would have i wish i would have got a video of that <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> and you know obviously this is a pretty rough field up here uh yeah. lots of lots of little holes and all kinds of stuff um is it holding okay i imagine you hit some bumps you could probably shake it out there's not a whole lot of grip to it well you know the 
the ditches that yeah. are over on the other Wash side of the hill, out. Yeah. those will just bounce it completely out. Oh. Well, I know that because I've because you did hit it once. once. Gosh, I should, have, I should have just been up here filming you for four hours. Yeah. I got all kinds of interesting stuff. Yeah, but on the the regular, it's yeah, it holds fine. Very cool. It's, and then obviously gathering field, uh, gathering field hay, and, and getting it into stacks like this is a different matter than putting on the trailer yeah. and getting it out of here. So that might be we have to rethink our strategy here a little bit. Soft hands might be great for getting it out of the field. Getting it on the yeah. trailer might be a whole different thing. Yeah. All right. I agree. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, and I, I told these guys I didn't tell you. So we got uh, 20 bales before last year right. off of this. It was 28,000 pounds, enough to feed 50 cows for 18 days. This year, we got 70 bales, 98,000 pounds, and enough to feed 50 cows for 60 days. Cool. That's the difference. That's amazing. Huge. Yeah, and we're going to continue with hang, probably, yeah. hopefully Friday or Saturday, we'll be able to get back out and get started. And, Good. and we're just gonna roll right along. We're gonna bring these guys along, so. Cool. Cool. All righty guys, that's it for us today. We're gonna sneak on out of here. Jeff, how many bales you got left? Uh, five. Five bales left to go, and this field is gathered. Uh, we'll let it dry for about a week or so before we move it out of here, or probably until we finish haying, actually. Yeah, we'll and then we'll start gathering hay all together. So, thank you guys for hanging out with us once again. Uh, haying continues, and a whole lot more on the way. So, be sure to subscribe and follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Switch tabs, by the way. That'll throw some people off. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.